Hello students, this is Professor Sansom and this is the pre-lab video for experiment three. We're going to begin talking about the simulation that you'll be performing using the learn.conquer.org portal. You should have written down your login, your username and password from experiment one. So go ahead and refer back to that in your manual when you sign in to the learn portal. And this time you'll be selecting the reaction rates activity. You'll click on run activity and the first page will be about concentration and reaction rate. I'm just going to show you how this model works so that you'll have a sense of what you have to do in the experiment. At the bottom of the simulation, you can add atoms. So for example, you can add two atoms or four atoms by clicking again. If you want to reset it, you use this reset button. I'm going to start with two atoms. So as soon as these two atoms have reacted to form a molecule, you're going to hit pause and you're also going to write down the time that's shown here in picoseconds as the time it took for that reaction to occur. In this case, because there's only two atoms, they'll either be separate, which would be 0% completion, or together, which would be 100% completion. But if we use 10 atoms instead, then we have a situation where we can have partial completion. In order to make this consistent, we're going to wait for the reaction to reach 80% completion, and that's going to be our metric of whether the reaction is complete. And so as soon as it reaches 80%, we're going to hit pause and we'll record the time. That's it for the simulation, and next we'll talk about the experiment you'll do in lab. I'm going to begin by describing the setup of the equipment that you'll be using for this experiment. Today, you'll be using the temperature and pressure sensors. Get out the temperature sensor that looks like a white shoelace and plug it into the wireless temperature link. Then plug in the pressure sensor to the wireless pressure link. First, you'll wanna place the hot plate under your personal downdraft hood and make sure that you can plug it in. Next, place a 250 milliliter beaker on the hot plate. This is going to act as your water and ice bath when you're changing the temperature of your solution. Now place the thermometer in the beaker. Then get your 50 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. You're going to clamp this onto the ring stand using a utility clamp, and then you're going to lower it so that it's suspended in this beaker. Your utility clamp actually has three adjustments. So there's one that attaches it to the pole and we follow the rule righty, tidy, lefty, loosey. Before you attach the clamp, make sure that your pole is actually firmly attached to the table. Your pole shouldn't spin. If it's loose, take the whole pole and twist it to the right to tighten it to the table. Uh, so you have this adjustment in the back to attach it to the pole. There's one adjustment in the middle, and this one helps to orient the clamp. You'll want your clamp to be uh, facing so that it opens up and down instead of sideways. You have the outer adjustment, and this will tighten or loosen the grip on the flask itself. Once you've got your Erlenmeyer flask suspended in your beaker, you'll want to add your stir bar and turn on the stir function on your stir plate. Again, be careful that you're using the stir function and not the heat function. Make sure that it's stirring properly. Now you are ready to open the SparkView software on your computer. Click on Build and choose the second template. In the smaller gray box, you're going to choose 1.23. That's our meter function and then you're going to select the temperature measurement for that box. In the larger gray box, you're going to use the graph function and you'll select pressure in kilopascals as your unit on the y-axis. Time will be the unit on the x-axis. Now you should be set up to collect data. It's a good idea before you set up everything to measure for your experiment that you check for leaks. So a good way to do this is just to get some of the ingredients, your catalase and hydrogen peroxide, put them into the flask and put the rubber stopper in and make sure that the pressure is actually increasing, which you'll see uh, on your graph that you've set up. If the pressure is not increasing measurably, 
you'll want to check for leaks. One thing that's common is that the rubber stopper isn't actually securely inserted into the flask. And one thing that can help is to wet the edge of the rubber stopper. Just get your finger wet and sort of uh, wipe it around the edge of the stopper and that can help it sort of seal when you put it into the flask. You also have to insert it pretty firmly. The other things that can be problematic are going to be the connectors on the ends. Sometimes your rubber stopper has too large of a hole so the connector isn't really inserted. It has to be airtight in order for the experiment to work. So you can change to a different rubber stopper if that's the case. If you have any further problems that can't be corrected by those two fixes, you should talk to your TA and they should be able to help you. Sometimes you have to change the connectors in order to get a tight seal. Now, once you're collecting data, you're gonna to want to get the initial rate of this reaction. That's how you're going to compare the rates of reaction under the different conditions. And uh, what you need to do is fit the first 10 points on your data. You'll be pushing play to record data before you've put in your ingredients because you want to actually capture it right as soon as it as soon as the reaction starts. So you'll push play and then you'll insert the rubber stopper to uh, measure the reaction. And uh, you want to get just the first few points on the, the linear part of the graph when it starts to go up after being flat at the beginning before the reaction starts and then before it starts to level out. 10 points is sort of a guideline. Hopefully you get about 10 points that are pretty linear at the beginning. If your curve is a lot flatter, you might only get five points or something like that, and that's okay. Just try to be consistent so that for all of your trials, you're fitting them the same way. In order to fit this, you're first going to click on the fit function and choose a linear fit, and then you'll want to use the select function to choose those points. The slope that you get from this linear fit line is going to be the rate of your reaction in kilopascals per second. So that's a rate that you can compare between your trials. That's everything for experiment three. Thanks.